Hey everyone, it's me, it's Jackie, your one week and two week Catalina Sea Camp director. We are jumping into another episode. Yep, it is me, Paul Buttercup Kupferman, your three week Catalina Sea Camp director. We've got a special guest here. Hi. Who are you? Um, <laughs> my Who the heck are you? I am Ashley Peach Bush. Most people call me Peach. I am the dive director at Catalina Sea Camp. Woohoo! Hey, you're tuned in to the Catalina Sea Camp Breakdown. Oh my god. So I think before we kind of dive into all of the questions. Dive. <gasps> See what you did there? We're going to do that a lot. <laughs> yeah, that okay. was great. <laughs> before we take a deep dive oh, into, God. I know, it's so great, all of the um, important topics and questions. I mean, really, this is for every single parent, I would say, that is sending their, even if you're sending your kid to the one week, maybe this will be a quick podcast for you <laughs> because we'll finish that question for you in the beginning. Um, but we, like, introduce yourself, Peach. Like, when did you kind of jump into the GDI world? How did you get into diving? Kind of give us a little background on why you're sitting in this position. Yeah, sure. Um, I think it's a fun story. I started working for Guided Discoveries at Simi Fox Landing back in 2011. I had been snorkeling. I liked kids. I liked the ocean, but I'd never really like been in a wetsuit before. I'd never been scuba diving, and I got to do all of that at Fox and really loved for it. For the first time? Um, yeah, yeah. I learned how to scuba dive my first season at Fox. Oh my gosh. For some reason, I thought you like came in like loving diving or something that all happened for you at Fox yeah wow yeah so That's I got cool. certified there and then that summer I was just you know probably advanced in open water and got to go to sea camp at Toyon to DLC for a few days a week and I was like floored I was like oh my goodness mm -hmm. kids are doing what I just learned how to do and I need to be a part of this next summer so I worked really hard that year and met all the prerequisites for the dive master course and then I did the dive master course at Toyon the next summer which is a course we offer prior to summer for our staff um, and I got to work at sea camp as a dive master cool. and then the next summer um, got to work as an instructor did our instructor training course that we offer for staff and then yeah, I haven't left yet. Yeah. So now I'm the dive director and I really love doing it and I really love our program. That is so cool. I, I guess I didn't realize that you first, you're, like you first learned to dive working at Guided Discoveries. Mm -hmm. So it like was, your love for it was birthed there and like here you are running our whole dive program. Yeah. Wow, I think that's Pretty really cool. Pretty darn cool. I, I would say, Jackie, when people ask me what makes Catalina Sea Camp different and unique and special the first thing that i go to is our dive program yeah. you know um there you know you can snorkel at a, a lot of different camps you can sail at a lot of different camps and yes our sail program is incredibly unique but the dive program that has been fostered over the years by the many incredible dive directors is truly what separates us from the other camps and even more i think the other camps on catalina island mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah yeah, I mean, I got my dive certification at camp yeah. and loved it so much. It was, I would say it changed my life in the form of me loving the ocean. Mm. So, awesome. Well, that's great. Uh, we're so excited to have you here, Peach, because really, we get so many questions. We get so many questions. We do. <laughs> and we're always like, oh my the gosh. The impetus <laughs> for this podcast today. Yes. Um, we, as you know, and some of you might not know, we run three different programs. Yes. We have a one week, a two week, and a three week. And the dive programs are different and mm -hmm. unique in each of those. Mm -hmm. um, if you had to peach in a little capsule, um, describe the differences between the diving in each of the programs, how would you do so? Yeah, so um, in our one week programs, we our diving is all snorkel and skin diving based. Um, but we think that's such a good foundation for people interested in scuba later on. So um, at the one weeks, Jackie groups will snorkel two or three times depending on their age. Yes, two uh -huh. to three times depending on their age with lots of opportunities to 
do extra snorkeling, and then we have night snorkel options too. Oh, so cool. Yeah. And so, yeah, and our instructors are so good at meeting those campers where they're at, right? We have some yeah. campers who have never been in the ocean before, some who snorkel all the time in their free time. And so our instructors will make sure everybody's on the same page in terms of those basic skills, um, make sure they're comfortable in all their equipment and explain how that works, and then get them out there to really explore our really cool diving environments. So that's the bulk of diving at our one weeks, yeah? Yeah. 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 Um, at our two weeks, we also offer great snorkel well, experiences. So basic, advanced, Ooh. Um, and then we take GoPros, do a little bit of photo, snorkel, Yeah. Um, but we only do the tri-dive. Right, yeah. So for scuba diving at our two-week programs, it's a one-day, pretty much a half-day event um, where we are taking those older two-week campers who are interested and we're doing a tri-dive with them. So they are paired one-on-one -on -one with an instructor and that instructor is reviewing like really basic scuba safety practices, mm -hmm. um, talking about the skills they're going to try out underwater. We want to make sure everybody has a level of comfort underwater before we're taking them exploring. But once those basic skills are completed, then that one-on-one -on -one instructor will take um, the camper on a tour around whatever dive site we're at, which is really fun. Yeah. Yeah. So those for the two week, the try to have offer opportunity, we only offer that to 12, 13, no, no, 13, 14, 15 year olds. Yes. Mm -hmm. So if your camper is 13 or 14 or 15 and they're going to the two week program, they can sign up for the tri-dive tri -dive tri -dive opportunity, mm -hmm. which is mm -hmm. a, like Peach said, half day event. event. Yeah. And so fun. And but so fun. Everybody had so much fun with it. I mean, last it's year. really unique. Yeah. If you think about it, like a lot of tri dive places are like at resorts or they go or to the pools. pools. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, they go on a boat. They yep. go on a boat to a beautiful, like remote water part of Catalina. I mean, mm -hmm. it's just like nobody gets to do that. I just yeah. feel like that's so unique mm -hmm. for a tri dive experience. So yes. we're proud of that in the two week program. Yeah. Um, and then, yeah, our three week program is where the bulk of our scuba diving happens. Um, in the three weeks, we also offer, you know, skin diving classes and free diving classes. So if some kids have zero water experience, but they want to get their toes wet. Um, I, I will say yeah, that I was an asthmatic child mm -hmm. and I was not able to scuba dive at sea camp and I attended for six years and absolutely yeah. loved it. Took snorkeling courses, took underwater photo, mm -hmm. um, took lots of snorkeling courses the entire mm -hmm. time, felt challenged, um, got better and better each year, but I wasn't able to scuba dive and it was totally fine. Yeah, I think our, our snorkeling classes are some of my favorites. They're so fun. Campers get to get out and explore different parts of the island and snorkel at so many different places. And like mm -hmm. Paul said, once you're comfortable with those basic snorkel skills, we offer uh, like snorkel photo class, a snorkel video class. Mm -hmm. um, we're hoping to introduce some like scientific snorkeling into our curriculum this year, which will be pretty cool. Okay, so now that we kind of have an idea of what's happening at the one week and the two week and the three week is the bulk of our diving, of the diving offered, if you could break down for us the types of certifications that are offered, you know, can you come to camp already certified? Uh, just like what, give us the lowdown of like different types of campers that are coming and joining the program. Yeah, so we have a huge range of courses. Um, for campers who are not certified, but interested in learning how to scuba dive, we have two options. One is try dive, um, but instead of just having an afternoon or a morning of try dive, um, this course meets six times. Um, so campers, We'll start with a snorkel, make sure all those skills are good and dialed, and then do a couple dives with instructors to work through some of the basic scuba skills. And once the instructor is comfortable with those divers level um, in the water, then they'll do just a bunch of fun dives in tours around the island and really getting to explore. So it's, it's an awesome course for campers who are interested in diving, but not necessarily ready to invest the time um, that a certification requires. So okay. that brings us to our certification class um, and an open water scuba certification 
will take you anywhere, right? You can use that all over the world to dive on dive boats, to rent tanks, to do shore dives, to take other um, diving classes where you continue your education. So um, the open water course is a big course. Um, this course meets every day. So there are 12 meetings over the three week session. Um, and it's a lot of skills at the beginning. Again, getting really comfortable with all of your equipment um, for, for your safety as a diver, right? So you're learning what to do if you get water in your mask and how to get that water out. You're learning what to do if for whatever reason you lose your regulator and you need to get that back. So just all skills that make you safe underwater if problems do come up. Um, so that course starts very like skills heavy at first and then gets into fun dives at the end to where at the end campers are like leading and planning their own dives, which is so cool. I love seeing that progression from kids who have no experience with scuba and then at the end of three weeks they're just they're divers and it's so awesome wow. one question that i do get asked a lot is will my child get a certification and i say sometimes it doesn't happen yeah. um, sometimes you have campers who really want to get certified but some of those skills are too much for them mm -hmm. can you talk about the process of what happens when we realize that maybe this isn't the right activity for that camper yeah, yeah, that's such a good question. Um, we definitely don't guarantee certifications. We are only certifying those divers who we feel really comfortable with in right. the water. They're divers who have checked off all the skills that are required by NAWI, our certifying organization, but also divers that we feel confident in. And sometimes campers get to camp and they realize scuba is not for them. Um, mm -hmm. Either the skills are too intense, they're not wanting, they, they just don't like it. Um, and that's okay. Not everybody needs to like scuba all the time. So if a camper makes a decision that scuba is not for them or the instructors are really seeing that maybe this isn't a good fit for that camper. Um, there are a couple options. If the camper is still super excited, we can put them in the tri-dive course, which is a little bit um, slower paced with less pressure on, on getting skills completed. Um, or some campers will want to just do free diving. Um, and then they can move into a free diving course. So we really, we're really like in tune with camper comfort and what's gonna be best for them. If they decide it's not for them that summer and they want to try elsewhere, we write them a referral. Right. So we'll list all the skills that they've completed, send that home with them, and then those families can take that to a dive shop and continue the course, or they can come back next summer and try again. And we've always called parents when a switch like that is going to happen. Yes, absolutely. As we've found that parents, you know, really, a lot of them want to get their kids certified and mm -hmm. to take them out of a course like that we see as a big deal. Mm -hmm. And so we will always reach out to families. Yes. Cool. Yeah. And we recognize like choosing to do this open water course is a pretty big investment on top mm -hmm. of like the time investment for your camper because it takes up half of their schedule. Um, we ask that the NAWI open water scuba diver e-learning is completed ahead of camp and that is a course that can be purchased at our online dive store which we'll put the link in the comments yeah we can do that mm -hmm. yeah put it right here right here look put at it right there. here but also Man. in the comments producer patrick put it right there <laughs> um and then we also ask that campers in that course have their own mask snorkel fins and booties um so those things can be purchased at the dive store ahead of camp and then we will have them waiting for campers when they arrive um, or they can be purchased elsewhere and brought to camp um, so there is like a bit of an investment in the open water course yes yes Do, uh, I, i'll talk about the gear yeah um, please. i think the gear that your team um, offers to our campers is top of the line gear. Mm -hmm. And it's not at crazy prices. In fact, mm -hmm. it's typically at better prices than you would get at any dive store or yeah. anywhere else online. The fins are incredibly high quality. You and your team go to diving conferences all around the world and mm -hmm. pick the best stuff and partner with the best companies. Um, and this is the stuff that we highly recommend. Like yeah. Ross always said, don't bring you know the snorkel with the ping pong ball in it that goes up and right. down. <laughs> yeah. We'd rather you feel safe and comfortable comfortable and have uh, the best quality equipment and we offer that stuff at really really good prices yeah yeah so um, like I said you can buy that gear elsewhere we just really stress that that gear is designed for scuba diving and not designed for snorkeling or for use in a pool we're looking for that higher quality scuba yeah. gear um, and that's required for all of our scuba courses open water and beyond um, it's not required for tri-dive 
because we recognize with TriDive, people are just trying it. They might not like it. They might not want to make the investment in that gear, and that's totally fine. We can provide that gear for them, but for every other course, mm -hmm. we like campers to have their own mask, snorkel, fins, and booties. I got my gear as a camper in 2011, mm -hmm. and I used it for almost 10 years. Yeah. Like, forever. The fins, the mask, and the booties. I mm -hmm. bought my fins in 1996. Six, oh and I'm still using them today. You are so That's old. cool. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we just get great quality it's, equipment. It's really good yes, stuff. Yes, Jackie, I'm old. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> um, yeah, so, um, oh, I had a question about gear as you were, I was thinking Did like, you forget something about... because you're old? Mm. No. One thing that I'm going to ask <laughs> okay. is my daughter is incredibly farsighted. Okay. And to put a regular mask on her, it's... It just doesn't work. So what do you do with children that have prescriptions? Great question. Um, for campers who are snorkeling or in the tri-dive, we have prescription masks available um, for them to use. Um, we also sell prescription masks in our dive store. Um, and yeah, they work great. Or if campers have contacts and they choose to wear those instead of a prescription mask, um, contacts work well underwater. Great. Yeah. Um, other things. Um, I get lots of questions about wetsuits. Mm. Um, we all have different ideas about wetsuits, but I want to um, say, number one, we have wetsuits. We, we do. have more wetsuits yeah. than you would even imagine. There's so much neoprene at our program, it's silly. Um, talk to me about what you would tell a new parent who says, do I have to buy a wetsuit for my child who's going to be scuba diving? No. You don't, because like Paul said, we have gobs of wetsuits. Um, so our wetsuits are three-piece suits. Each piece is three millimeters. So we have really high-waisted pants, vest that goes over top, and then a jacket that goes over top of that. And so on the core, campers have about nine millimeters of neoprene, and on the arms, three. And for most campers, that is plenty to keep them warm. Sometimes our, our younger campers mm -hmm. will get a little chilly, um, and we'll just add an extra vest on top. And we also have hoods that campers can wear to keep their heads warm. Um, so yeah, we have plenty of wetsuit. I would say, and you can disagree with me, for the one-week program, please use our wetsuits. Yeah. For the yeah. two-week program, yeah, please no. use our wetsuits. You don't need to be sending, for the one-week and two-week programs, don't send wetsuits. Um, I would even say don't send gear, like snorkel, mask, and booties, mm -hmm. and fins, because um, we have all of that at Fox, yes. and it does get lost, it gets left. Um, it's it's can be more of a hassle than it is helpful in the one week and two week program specifically. If you have a three week camper and they are bringing their gear, labeling that gear mm -hmm. is your number one priority. That way, if it is left, which a lot of times they are left, we are able to return it to you or at least find out whose it is. Um, if your camper buys gear, we spend an entire afternoon mm -hmm. handing that gear out the first full day of camp and labeling. It's a great way for us to learn names. Yeah. We use these great paint pens on the gear and we label everything. That way we can get that gear back to the campers. Mm -hmm. If you are going to bring a wetsuit, um, please label the heck out of that as mm -hmm. well. That is a very frequently left item. Again, your campers do not need to bring a wetsuit, but if they do two or three week, label it and realize that if they're flying home, they're going to be bringing a wet, stinky wetsuit <laughs> home with them. So we will provide trash bags, um, but again, it, it, it is not needed and can be somewhat cumbersome mm -hmm. to bring home. Mm -hmm. But like Jackie yeah. said, it's wonderful to dive with your own mm -hmm. wetsuit. Yeah, right. I think if your camper is a diver already and if they already have a wetsuit that they're comfortable in, Please, please bring it. I, I, I can't say enough about diving in gear that you're comfortable right, yeah. and familiar with. Um, but don't, please don't feel like you need to go out and buy a wetsuit to send your yeah. camper to camp. I'm going to retrack us because we totally got off mm. track. So we're going to go back to talking about the certifications because yeah. Peach finished talking about uh, open water and there's some more certification classes. So if maybe when you are cutting it, if you could take all the equipment stuff we just talked about and move it back. Yeah. Um, so if we could go a little bit more into, so you just talked about mm -hmm. open, um, water. open water. So there's a few more certifications and then there's cl other classes. So if you could go a little bit more into those. Yeah, yeah, sorry to get us off track. No, it wasn't um, you, it just happens. It we happens. just have to talk about it so that when he's cutting it, yeah. he can. 
so you know, what we're saying. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So we talked about tri dive and open water. Um, big difference is in open water, you get a certification that you can take elsewhere. Bigger time commitment, bigger monetary investment up front. Um, and then more, for certified divers, we have so many classes and it's so fun. Um, one is advanced scuba diver, which is kind of the next step beyond open water. In advanced, you get to do a lot of fun dives, like a deep dive, a night dive, a boat dive. Um, and that's an awesome course. We ask that campers who sign up for advanced are certified and have 10 open water dives. So six dives beyond their open water certification. Um, and that's just because we want to ensure like a certain level of comfort before we're taking kids to 70 feet underwater. Um, for kids who want their advanced certification but don't have 10 dives, um, we have Advanced Plus, which is fantastic. And like open water, it meets every day. It starts out with some fun dives to get campers comfortable diving again. For some campers, it's been a while since they, they have dove. Um, we do some fun dives around the island and then we introduce those advanced dives. So both advanced and advanced plus and with an advanced certification for campers who complete all the dives. Nice. Which is cool. Um, another awesome course is Naui Rescue Scuba Diver, which includes a first aid and CPR certification. Um, this course does require some e-learning ahead of camp, just like our open water course. Um, but it's really fantastic. Campers are learning, you know, scuba rescue skills so that if there is a problem in the water, they're able to help solve it. And it also focuses yes. a lot on like preventing problems before they start. Um, but rescue, I think, is where a lot of divers get so much more confident in the water and in their skills. Um, and I think it's a really fun course. And then our master diver course is like our capstone course, yes. right? Yeah. Um, again, a course that meets every day. It really dives into the physics and physiology associated with scuba. Um, there is e-learning prior to camp as well. And you just get to do such cool dives um, at different places on the island, search and salvage diving, um, really detailed navigation diving. Visiting the buoyancy. chamber. Yeah, you get oh, to do a visit cool. to the USC hyperbaric yeah. chamber, which is so cool. Um, and Master Diver is a really awesome course. Um, and then on top of that, we have so many specialty courses um, like Night Diver, which happens during elective nights, doesn't take up room in the schedule. Scuba Video, Scuba Photo, Advanced Scuba Photo, a course called Catalina Diver, where you just get to go do fun dives all over the island. Um, and that's my favorite course. It's so cool to see. We, we kind of try to transfer responsibility for leading and planning the dive onto campers throughout the course. Mm -hmm. So at the beginning, the dive leaders will be telling them the dive plan and leading the dive. And by the end, um, the dive leaders are just kind of following behind while these campers are executing their own Aww. dives, which is so cool. Um, and then a, a course that we're revamping is our scuba ecologist course, and it's really going to have a kelp restoration focus this yeah. year. Nice. Yeah, we're doing um, a, a really awesome kelp restoration project both at Fox and Toyon right now, and so this course is gonna focus a lot on scientific diving and some of those kelp restoration practices. Um, Dang. Yeah. So for the certifications, for people who are like know nothing about dive certifications, mm -hmm. in order to do them, you have to kind of start the basic. You start with open water, mm -hmm. then you get advanced, then mm -hmm. you can do rescue, then you can do- Each following year. Master. Yes. yes. Right. So you can't mm -hmm. do like advanced and then master. You have to get your rescue before you go to master. Yes. Okay. Okay. Yeah. And, and that's another good question. And I think you kind of brought it up too, is like, you can't do advanced your first week of camp, rescue your second week of camp mm -hmm. and master yeah. your third week of camp. All of these courses run over the whole three weeks. So it'd be like one summer you do open water and then the next summer you come back and do advanced and then you do rescue. Or like if you don't want to do advanced or rescue or master, like that's fine too. Mm -hmm. You can do cat diver, you mm -hmm. can do scuba photo. Um, th those don't have the same kind of prerequisites or progression. I, 
I talk to a lot of parents who have children that are hardcore divers, and they mm -hmm. say the only reason that my son is attending your camp is to dive. They want to dive the entire time. Mm -hmm. How many courses do you say? Is there a limit of mm -hmm. how many dive courses campers can take? What are your thoughts? Yeah, for most campers, we say no more than two. Um, in a session and for the courses that are, are double blocks that like meet every day so master advanced plus open water we usually just say just that course because that's half of your schedule is in and under the water um, we have some campers who just like live to dive and they love it so much and um, there are some campers where three dive courses will work hmm. <laughs> but not all of them. Yeah. Our, our fear is that yeah. th by, you know, the end of week two, they'll just be so tired, they'll be so waterlogged, they won't want to dive anymore. But for some select campers, that does work, and they love it, and they do amazing. But for most campers, we say a maximum of two okay. dive courses. Nice. Great. So who, because, Paul, you said at the very, very beginning of the podcast, when I was a camper, I was an asthmatic, and I could not dive. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. So... You know, what, what What would you say, Peach, is someone who is not a good candidate to scuba dive? Yeah, so unfortunately, I can't just say everybody can scuba dive because scuba is not safe for everybody all the time. There are um, like medical contraindications to diving. And if, if it turns out that your camper is someone who scuba is not safe for, it's just that. It's not because we don't want to dive with them. It's not because we're trying to be really stringent. We just want them to be as safe as and as healthy as possible. And for some campers, scuba is not a safe activity. So um, if your camper has a history or current exercise-induced asthma, scuba is likely not a safe choice for like allergy induced asthma um, we have some extra testing and medical forms that will require for that camper for for their doctor and the family to determine if scuba is a safe choice um, but current exercise induced asthma is a contraindication um, a history of fainting or loss of consciousness is a contraindication to scuba um, a history of epilepsy or seizures or current epilepsy mm -hmm. or seizures. Um, those are, are the main ones. Any, any like, we need healthy like respiratory and circulatory systems mm -hmm. to be able Makes to dive total safely. Sense. Yeah, and, it, yep. and if you have a camper with any of those conditions and you have questions about if scuba is the right fit, please ask me or another amazing resource is the Divers Alert Network. Um, they have a medical information line that's staffed by dive physicians during business hours and you can call them and talk to them about I, I talk to needs. a lot of parents who will say my child has learning disabilities mm. and really I, I couldn't imagine them doing physics at summer camp what I, I know that we have made accommodations in the past for students with um, with learning disabilities mm -hmm. how have you dealt with that yeah um, if you're camper has a learning disability, that's definitely something we want to know about ahead of time so that we can kind of tailor their instruction mm -hmm. to meet their needs. But we have a lot of campers who get certified in scuba dive with learning disabilities. Um, if we are kind of going through summer and we're um, having trouble figuring out how a camper learns best, then we will call home to talk to parents, caregivers about, you know, strategies that they use in school or that they use in their lives to help make that process easier. But our, our staff are amazing and we have such awesome support from the counseling staff as well yep. um, to where we're really good at working with youth. That's what we do. So yes. um, learning disabilities haven't, haven't been a huge problem. All right. What about if um, a camper gets sick during camp yeah. and misses like and they're getting a certification mm -hmm. and they miss like how many dives during camp can they miss before you're like Ugh, i don't know if you're going to be able to get certified because you're sick and then if they do miss dives is there like makeup opportunities like how do you mm -hmm. process how do you go through that yeah that question is like so dependent on the illness mm -hmm. the class and actually when they get sick so mm -hmm. if they miss a couple of dives at the beginning of the session um, then there's usually enough time to make up the skills that they missed in subsequent dives or we, we sometimes do makeup dives like before classes. Um, if a camper gets sick at the very end of the session and they miss 
three out of their four open water dives, then we don't have time to make it up. Um, sometimes we're not able to complete a certification. So we really encourage campers to stay healthy, drink a lot of water, wash their hands um, so that they are healthy enough to scuba dive through the course. But if for whatever reason, like we talked about at the beginning, they're not able to finish the certification, we can send them home with a referral so they can finish it elsewhere or they can come back to camp the next summer and nice. complete their certification. I want to bring up one thing that I think you've made huge strides in and that is taking and we've mentioned it earlier, but having campers do some of the coursework at home. Mm, yeah. And you know, we've had a lot of parents that will say, I don't want my kid to go to camp and just sit in a classroom. Mm -hmm. And so you've made a lot of accommodations and made it so campers can get a lot of that coursework out uh, out of the way before they come to camp. Can you maybe talk about that for a second? Yeah, yeah, so probably like, it's been a while now, like six to eight years ago, we started yep. um, offering e-learning for our open water course as an option. And now it's required for everybody in the open water course because it was so successful. So campers will do the bulk of that classroom work at home ahead of camp um, and also for the rescue course and the master diver course. Um, and it's so cool because they come to camp already with some understanding and then we're able to just really focus on the practical aspects of putting that understanding into action. Um, right. And we find that campers have had time to process the information and we're just seeing like much better results in the divers mm -hmm. that we're putting out at the end. And also they take the test at home before they come to camp. So previously a lot of campers had stress at the end of camp like am i gonna pass my open water course am i yeah. gonna be able to get certified um and we've just eliminated all of that stress which is really cool how much time do you think that will encompass yeah the open water course probably depends on the, on the student but um four to eight hours of time at home oh. prior to camp okay. um for rescue probably closer to four hours um and for master, probably closer to eight hours, could just because the, the detail is so, right. so intense, yeah. And all of that is found, I, I don't know if you already answered this, but like when they, you know, sign up for the course, mm -hmm. do they get an email? Do they go somewhere? Um, so the, that e-learning mm -hmm. can be purchased on our dive store website. Um, it's linked in our activity guide. Cool. It's linked in the scuba guide. Okay. Um, and so, yeah, part of signing up for that course is then going and buying that e-learning and getting started on that e-learning. When we are looking at camper preferences as we get closer to camp, if we see a camper signed up for a certification course but they haven't purchased the e-learning, then we will email home and remind families to purchase that e-learning so the campers can get started. It's super sad when a camper gets to camp and really wants to get certified, but they haven't done the e-learning. Mm. Um, and we have to say, sorry, you can't take that course right now. And that's really hard. So if your camper is doing open water, yeah. <laughs> rescue or master, please purchase them the e-learning. Get them on that e-learning. We <laughs> really want to unplug your kids and yeah. we don't have computers to give your kids mm -hmm. or iPads to give your kids to do that coursework once they are at camp. So yes. That must be done at home. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that kind of leads a little bit into the paperwork discussion yeah. of all of this, which is a hot topic. Everyone's favorite topic. We love talking mm. about paperwork. <laughs> it's so fun. Um, and I know that you're planning on, Peach, you're planning on doing a little bit more of an in-depth paperwork discussion. Mm -hmm. But if you can kind of tell our families who are watching right now, who's who are planning on signing up their campers, planning on doing diving, what are some things they can do right now to prepare to make that paperwork easier or faster? Yeah. Um, what are maybe some things you see in paperwork that is difficult, maybe that mm -hmm. people don't get done, you know, just to kind of give some tips and tricks into the paperwork world? Yeah, so um, right now, almost every form we, we require for scuba is up on Campminder and Campanion. That's Camp the same. Campanion is the app. The app yes. that you will download if you haven't already. That you really that should download your right hub now. <laughs> of communication, emailing, looking at photos, and also now, starting last year, 
paperwork. paperwork. Yeah. yeah. We'll put the Campanion link in the comments and maybe on the screen somewhere around here, mm -hmm. but it'll be in the comments. <laughs> yeah. Um, so yeah, all of our scuba forms are live right now. You can download them and start working on them um, with the exception of our waiver, which won't be live till May because we need to have our staff finalized before we send that waiver out. Um, I would say the first form to start working on is the scuba medical form. This needs to be signed by a physician for every single camper. Even if your camper is in perfect health, there's a questionnaire associated. Even if they check no to every single condition listed, we need that form signed by a physician. So if your camper has already had their physical for the year, most doctor's offices will take that form and fill it out post visit. If your camper has a physical scheduled before camp, um, please bring that form with you and we need that doctor's signature on there. Um, so that is the most important form and the form that requires somebody else to help you complete it. Um, the online scuba questionnaire asks some basic information. You can fill that out completely online, completely on the app. Um, and then for campers who are already certified, we need proof of their certification. So you'll send a copy of their certification card on the scuba documentation form. Um, in addition to Dan insurance, if if you have that. Um, for campers with a history of asthma, we have- Can I stop? Yeah, sure. What's Dan insurance? Oh. Who's Dan? Yeah, what is he doing with insurance? Yeah, wow. so Dan actually stands for the Divers Alert Network. Uh. Um, they're a wonderful organization committed to um, just like, dive education and research and making the sport of scuba diving safer. They also offer um, dive accident insurance. So if you're, you or your loved one are injured while scuba diving um, and you need advanced medical treatment, um, this dive accident insurance will cover the cost of that treatment. Some health insurance plans will cover the cost of scuba diving accidents and treatment for those, um, and some won't. Um, and some will only cover a portion of it, but Dan will cover the whole thing and, and they're really amazing. So Dan insurance is not required for our campers unless your health insurance does not cover scuba diving accidents. Right. Um, so yeah, on our scuba questionnaire, we ask about your health insurance. We ask if you have Dan insurance. I just recommend Dan insurance to everybody though. I think yes. it's fantastic. Yeah. Um, and it, it's relatively inexpensive for the coverage that you get. Um, Great, and then we have the scuba asthma form. So if your camper has a history of any type of asthma, we need that form filled out and signed by a physician. Um, if it is more recent asthma, we require some additional testing to be completed. So definitely fill, get started on that ASAP if your camper wants to dive and they have a history of asthma. Um, and then if your camper is bringing their own BCD or regulator, we have a scuba equipment service record form. So we ask that that scuba equipment has been serviced within the last 12 months and we ask for proof of that. And let me say, the regulator, we supply those regulators. Mm -hmm. You do not need to have a regulator. Correct. And then your buoyancy compensator, the, the vest that you're wearing, you mm -hmm. do not need to bring that as well. If you Correct. have it, great, but mm -hmm. we, we supply those. Yeah, yeah, so that, I guess, can be put in the pile of gear we supply. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Regulators, buoyancy compensator devices, weights, dive tanks, yeah. dive computers. Um, but if you do have that, stuff at home that you as a camper have used and you are comfortable with um, and you want to bring that, you may. Please don't bring, you know, your uncle's scuba gear from back in the 70s um, that you've never used before. We, we will supply that gear for you. No, I always like to say in terms of gear at camp for the one week, the two week and the three week, we have everything, everything a kid needs other than a towel and a Suit. And a really. good attitude. And a good attitude. <laughs> um, but in terms of the dive world, like Peach said, if, you, if your camper is an avid diver and has stuff that they feel really comfortable diving in, it's so much better for them, so much more comfortable for them. They should just bring it. Mm -hmm. But that's if they have their own stuff. And they can fill out the scuba equipment service <laughs> record service form, record form yeah. in time. So, so that's kind of like your list of all of the paperwork, and it's all in CampMinder. Mm-hmm under your camper account. It's a lot, we know it, and mm -hmm. thank you for doing it. It's just, 
it's something that we need to yeah. do for diving. I mean, you're going to do that if you're going diving in Hawaii on vacation. You're going to have all that paperwork. We want to make sure that your camper is safe and, and that we know how to work with each and every camper. Yeah, you want to fill out that paperwork because it helps us. It helps us make sure and helps Peach and all the dive instructors um, feel like they know your camper and the, you know, the type of diver, diver that they're working with. And that kind of leads me into another question for you, Peach, mm. is um, hiring. Because oh, yeah. you, you hire a whole staff of people who are dive instructors. Like, where do you find these people? Where, you know, what kind of certifications do they have? Um, um, where do you find these people? Yeah, where do you find people that are dive instructors that come to a summer camp for a whole summer? That's just like a yeah. unique job, you know? Yeah, yeah. So our dive staff um, is made up of scuba instructors and dive masters. Um, we are a NAWI based program, so they're all NAWI instructors or NAWI DMs. Um, and we recruit a lot at universities with strong dive programs. Um, so we do a lot of recruiting at Cal Poly Humboldt, CSU Monterey Bay, UC Santa Cruz. Later today, I'm going up to USC. Um, and we're looking for good divers. Um, some are already instructors or dive masters when we hire them. Um, for some people who meet the prerequisites, we offer an instructor training course and a dive master course prior to the start of summer. Um, yeah, and I think our dive staff is really amazing. One, one thing that's really cool about NAWI is that they have this loved one concept. Um, and basically, it, it's an idea that you will not certify a diver or you will not certify a dive leader unless you would trust them taking your loved one diving. Um, Can I ask a quick question? Yeah. NAWI, the National Association of Underwater Instructors, uh -huh. versus PADI. PADI stands for? People that like to dive in water. Just kidding. I, don't know. <laughs> I think the Professional Association of Diving Instructors. Um, many of our campers mm -hmm. who are already certified from other agencies mm -hmm. are PADI divers. Yeah. How do we handle a child that comes to camp already certified as a PADI diver? Yeah, we treat them just like they're certified as a NAWI diver. Cool. Really? Yeah. Yes. At, at, before the leadership level, so for all the courses we offer, there's not a huge difference between a NAWI open water course and a PADI open water course, or a NAWI advanced and a PADI advanced. Okay. Um, so we just treat them just the same. Cool. Yeah. All right. So you can have a NAWI, you can have a PADI open water like basic and then get NAWI advanced. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's nice. Yeah. It's different with, with the, with the actual instructors though, right? Yeah, with instructors and dive masters, it is different. They all have to be NAWI. Yes. Okay. I wanted to talk about one new course that we're offering. Oh, yeah. oh cool. Yeah. Um, and I'm so excited about it. It's called, um, let me see, Recreational Avello Diver. Mm -hmm. And Avello is a new kind of scuba unit, mm -hmm. right? Um, and so in traditional scuba, you have your regulator, you have your BC that you add air to, to be buoyant at the surface, you dump all the air out when you wanna go underwater, you have your tank that's aluminum. Um, the Avella system is pretty different. There's no BC, there is a regulator, because we always need a regulator. Um, but basically you control your buoyancy by adding water into your cylinder or purging water out of your cylinder. Wow. Which wow. is cool, and you're like, why? Why do you want to do this? Yeah. Um, one reason is because it, it can make scuba diving way safer. A lot of dive accidents happen because of like huge shifts in buoyancy mm -hmm. by dropping your weight belt or by adding too much air to your BC and going up to the surface. Um, with this Avella system, there's no major buoyancy changes like that because you're using water to control your buoyancy. Um, Does it look different? It looks a little different. Yeah, it's a, a piece of equipment called the jet pack. Yeah. And there's a battery on one side and a pump on the other side, and it pumps the water into your tank. Oh my gosh. Um, but also because you're not having to like offset weight for all that air that you have in your BC, um, you wear way less weight. So a traditional scuba unit with weight weighs about like 70 pounds. And this cuts that almost in half. Oh so like goodness. you have 45 pounds on your back instead of 70 pounds on your back. And I think it can be a huge game changer, especially for like the youth that we're working with who, yeah. who have smaller bodies. Who yeah. who can take this course? Already certified divers? Yes. 
Okay. Already certified okay. divers. So you have to be basic certified. Yeah, okay. open water certified. Open water certified. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and we're offering this course for the first time this summer in kind of a limited capacity. So if you're interested in taking this course, there is e-learning for this ahead of time. Um, and it should also be listed first on your activity preferences when you are signing up for classes. Good note. Okay. I think we only have eight spots per session oh. for this course. Um, but I think it's really cool. Maybe we can put the link to that website in here yeah. too so people can learn more. Avello. Avello. How do you spell A. that? A V E L O. It's right there on the screen. <laughs> Not to be confused with the airline. <laughs> I, think, I think the website is diveavello.com. Okay. Yeah. Okay, cool. Wow. So that's a new course being offered. Mm -hmm. A new technology. A new yeah. technology. Look at us. Wow. We're just so Jeez. advanced. I think it's going to revolutionize the scuba industry. Wow. You heard it here, folks. <laughs> and we're at the ground floor. Woo! That's right. Yeah. Go us. Go us. Um, that's awesome. Okay. If you have any further questions for Peach, please. Yeah. Um, email us. Your email is diving at gdi dot org. Dot org. Mm -hmm. It's right there on the screen as well. Thank you, wow. producer Patrick. Um, please, um, we love questions. Peach is wonderful about answering those questions. And we hope we covered uh, a lot of things that will make signing up for dive classes easier. Um, these are questions that we get all the time that we wanted to make sure that we, we answered for you. Yeah. So we'll have thank lots of you. links in the yeah. below. Um, and there will be more videos coming out. Like we keep saying, as the summer approaches, we will have, Peach will be having a more in-depth dive paperwork coming out. I'll be talking a little bit more about the two-week um, courses that we'll be offering this summer because that's changing a little bit for our two-week families. There'll be an, a live info session, Ooh. date to live. be announced. It'll oh my be goodness. an information session with Paul and I um, live that you can jump in and ask questions on and kind of talk to us through the video. So we will be having all of those uh, announced in emails and in the coming weeks. So keep an eye out. Thanks so much for tuning in. Thanks, Peach, hey, for being here. Thank you for having yeah, me. This thank was you so for fun. We love having friends. Leaving Catalina Yay. and joining us here. It was great having you. I know. Great Good to times. be here. Thank awesome. You. Well, thanks, everyone. Hey, this has been the Catalina Seacamp Breakdown. Thanks for watching. Toodaloo. See you later. Bye.